You are all traitors to the Empire. You will be interrogated, tortured. You will give me the names of your friends and allies. And then you will die. <laughs> Our deaths will only rally others. Your very public and painful executions will serve as an example to the rest of the galaxy. There may be a rebellion yet. Lord Leather, deal with the boy. Well, but you still have much to learn. You have nothing left to teach me. Alrighty, folks, welcome to the final part of Star Wars The Force Unleashed, and now we're taking on our former master, we're taking on Big Bad Darth Vader himself. Although, if I'm gonna be honest, he's actually one of the easier Jedi bosses in the whole entire game. He's very slow, he's very telegraphed, a lot of his attacks you can see coming and counter, and counter them with the lightsaber. Uh, in terms of force abilities, he doesn't really have much. That force push he just did right there, he builds it up, you see it coming, you dodge out of the way, and when you get super close to Darth Vader, sometimes he'll grab you with the force and you'll have to mash B in order to get out of it. When he enters the second room, there's this force field on the ground that you don't want to be standing on because it actually burns Star Killer's feet, so you want to be standing on one of the side panels or the middle platform. Uh, but Darth Vader's strategy here, he's going to throw objects at you, right? And you can pick those objects up and throw them back at him, or you can beat him to the punch and pick up an object he's not throwing and throw it at Darth Vader right away. And it stuns Darth Vader and lets you do a massive combo and drain his health like nothing. Like, I'm just murdering this guy's health bar because he doesn't really have any tactics for that, you know? After a while, when you drain his health bar, Darth Vader has a hissy fit, he destroys all the platforms with the Force, and then he hops to the final platform at the very back. And at this point, you're just draining Vader's health all the way until the QTE happens. But again, he's still got the basic force push that's easy to see coming, which you can dodge no problem. He still is easy to counter his sword swings with. And uh, you can keep throwing objects at him, unlike what I was doing. So here's the force push. Jump over! Oh, he fired it. <laughs> Too slow, Vader. One of the easier fights in the game. He's not anything compared to Maris Brood, Coda, Darth Maul, etc. at my side. No! Help him! Oh god, what do I do? Do I go down there and kill Darth Vader once and for all? Or do I save my friend who's getting murdered by electricity? I'll probably save Koda because why would I abandon him? <laughs> Besides, Vader's pretty much beaten anyway. I may as well go after the guy who's still standing, the big bad Emperor. Emperor Palpatine's kind of an annoying guy to fight. He might be the hardest guy in the whole entire game. Even though earlier I said proxy as Darth Maul was. Eh, I take that back. I think the Emperor was. <laughs> the Emperor, he's kind of annoying because if you try slashing him with a lightsaber, he tends to back up a lot. Like, he likes floating all over the arena. He'll just float from one spot to the other, 
and every time he floats somewhere, he usually shoots you with a whole bunch of electricity. Now, something I didn't do enough in this boss fight is that when the Emperor shoots electricity, you can block... Ow! <laughs> he threw something on my head. But uh, when you block his electricity with your lightsaber, Starkiller will actually absorb the electricity and he'll send it back on the Emperor. And this can happen with any uh, Jedi battle who has electricity. Like, it happens with uh, the Dark Star Killer fight in the Jedi Temple DLC, and it will be definitely happening in one of the future DLC missions I'm going to be playing later. But I didn't do it enough, you know? He could shoot electricity on you, you could catch the electricity with block, like by holding the block button, and then you send the electricity back on him, and it damages him a little bit. And I didn't do that enough, because I kept trying to rush into him and slash him with the lightsaber, because, you know, I hadn't fought this in a long, long time, you know? I did do a test recording of this, uh, but I, it went a lot better where I was actually catching up with him with the lightsaber and, and he wasn't usually shooting electricity or something. I don't know, but uh, every now and then he picks up these four containers from the ceiling and he tries throwing them at you. Uh, and you just want to hide behind the pillar, I find. That's always the best defense. Sometimes I activate the lightning shield because sometimes the angle does go right above the barrier and it still hits Star Killer in the head. So I, I activate the lightning shield just for that extra bit of defense. And of course, every now and then, as you see, uh, the Royal Guards pour in when uh, the Emperor's health goes down a certain bit and then uh, they try to attack you. And the blue ones are easy because you can force grip them no matter what. So yeah, I just pick up the blue guys and throw them at the force field and then down stab them when they're down. But the red guys might not be force grippable, so you might have to throw the blue guys at the red guys, or you might have to throw one of these objects that the Emperor's throwing at me right now at the red guys in order to knock them down or something. But uh, the red guys might give you trouble because they're not so easy to bring down like the blue guys are. Like here, I throw the blue guy into the red guy. <laughs> But uh, that's how you get your health back, because the Emperor does a lot of damage with his attacks. He's very, very strong, the Emperor. Even with high vitality, high resilience, the Emperor's going to shave your health pretty badly. So you want to kill the Royal Guards. Well, you have, to you have to kill the Royal Guards. But it's a good thing they come in so that you can get your health back. Either way, take advantage of shooting his electricity back at him with the block button, unlike me. And, uh... It's going to be tough, but you can do it. You can defeat Emperor Palpatine. You were destined to destroy me. Do it. Give in to your hatred. He's beaten. Let it go. It's a trick. He's stronger than you know, and he deserves to die for what he's done to me. Maybe so. But if you strike him down in anger, you'll be right back where you began. Get Bale and the others out of here. I'll be right behind you. meant to root out the rebels. His sacrifice will only inspire them. But now we know who they are. 
I will hunt them down and destroy them. As you always intended, Master. You must be relentless, Lord Vader. If even a single rebel survives, this alliance that we have unwittingly created will be our undoing. Are we ready to finish what he started? Then at last, the Rebel Alliance is born. Here. Tonight. We need a flag to rally behind. A symbol. A symbol of hope. He's at last one with the Force. You always knew who he was, didn't you? I suspected, yes. Then why did you help us, after all the things we'd done? When he came to me in the bar, among all his dark thoughts, I glimpsed one bright spot, one beautiful thing he held on to, even at the end. What? You. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was Star Wars The Force Unleashed. And so, yeah, Starkiller's family crest is the symbol of the Rebel Alliance. Like, when you, when you watch the movies and you see the Rogue Squadron guys going into their X-Wings and they're putting on their helmets and you see the Rebel Alliance symbol on their helmets, oh yeah, that's in memorial of Starkiller, the, the brave Jedi who helped assemble this group in the first place thanks to Darth Vader's suggestion. I, I know Darth Vader was trying to gather them all up so that he could kill them all in one swift stroke, but Darth Vader kind of unintentionally created the Rebel Alliance, which is weird to think about, and I don't know if you consider that canon or not. Well, I guess not, because Disney bought out Star Wars, and now the only thing that's canon are the movies, Rebels, Clone Wars CG cartoon, and all the new stuff that's coming out now, I guess, but, uh... <laughs> Back in 2008, this was kind of a big deal, you know? This is a really ambitious Star Wars title. This is more ambitious than most Star Wars video games, I would say. They invented a lot of great story beats, you know? George Lucas was giving directions on what the st Well, George Lucas always gives direction on everything Star Wars, or at least he used to. But, uh... I really, really like this game. From the first two or three levels, when I was on Kashyyyk, the TIE Fighter Factory, and I was just screwing around with the enemies, picking them up, putting them near boxes, seeing them grab the boxes. You could pick up stormtroopers and watch them pick up other stormtroopers, like, HELP ME! OH MY GOD! It is so, so much fun to play Star Wars The Force Unleashed. I had a blast with this game. I think I played the demo of Force Unleashed before I actually played the main game. And I must have played that demo over and over and over and over again because I couldn't get over how fun it was to screw around with the Stormtroopers and to play as Starkiller. It was one of the best controlling Jedi slash Sith experiences I've ever had in a Star Wars video game. And I've played a few, you know, I've played Revenge of the Sith on PlayStation 2. A lot of people seem to like that combat system, especially its multiplayer. Um... But I, I still think The Force Unleashed is better. I still think Force Unleashed is really satisfying. And this is one of those action games where you don't feel like a loser all the time. Like, don't get me wrong, I like Platinum Games games. I love uh, Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. I love uh, Devil May Cry and whatnot. But every time you finish a battle, it ranks you, you know? And you always get, like, a C or a B if you're not really good at the game. Like, I just button mash. I'm not great at dodging all the attacks. Most of the time, I get, like, a B or an A, and I'm just like, Oh, I wanted the Platinum. I wanted the S rank. I wanted this. I wanted that. 
I got the gold or the silver or whatever, and it's just like, uh Force Unleashed doesn't really do that, and I appreciate that. I will say, coming back to this game, uh, graphically, it has not aged up very well. Um, oh my god, the pop-in. Like, when I was, like, freezing frames to get, like, images and, like, just skipping ahead in, in the video editor, you can see throughout the cutscenes how often, like, you'll be watching a cutscene and then something will just pop into frame. Like, when it cuts to a different angle, things will just pop in. Like, the platform that Starkiller's gonna ride up to the higher level just pops in. Uh, an object will just pop in. Like, the graphical effects are pretty bad. The interlacing... Or it's not the interlacing, it's screen tearing, I think? Oh my god, the screen tearing's not as good as I remember it being. Uh, <laughs> it's definitely a 2008 game, not a 2016 game. Eight years ago. Hard to, hard to imagine. But, uh, even still, I, I think it's a fun game. It's pretty glitchy, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, this game is a really glitchy one, and I imagine if you play Force Unleashed for your first time, you're going to be encountering a whole bunch of weird glitches that I did not. Uh, in, in one of my test recordings for the Death Star level, I was fighting Darth Vader, and he was tearing up the side panels with the Force, like we were in the final part of the Vader fight. And the, the panel that we're supposed to stand on and fight on at the very end was, like, lifted upwards somehow, and the, the whole fight was being blocked by this big metal piece, and I couldn't see what I was doing. I couldn't see what Vader was doing to me, and that's never happened to me in any other fight with Darth Vader, so, uh... It's a little bit glitchy, I'm not gonna lie. It is not the most perfect game ever. It is somewhat unpolished. Somewhat. But I think the game's too fun that I don't really care. And most of the time it feels pretty polished to me that it, it's still an enjoyable, satisfying experience. You know, if you just want to turn your brain off and use the force to beat up stormtroopers and Felucian warriors and Rancors and and Rodians with machine guns, miniguns, uh, Star Wars The Force Unleashed is the game for you. I don't really consider the story canon, but I enjoy the story. I like the actors involved, I like all the plot uh, twists, like all the developments and twists. I think it's a much more engaging story than The Force Unleashed 2, which had no story other than WHERE'S JUDO? WHERE'S JUDO? Ah! God. <laughs> I, I am not doing a Let's Play on Force Unleashed 2. And yes, Starkiller returns in Force Unleashed 2. Kind of. He's dead in this game, but he's a clone in the sequel game, and you play as his clone, and he uses two lightsabers in the sequel, and um... The combat's kind of better, but it's more repetitive than the first game. The story goes nowhere. You don't have any Jedi boss battles in the second one, because all the Jedi are dead. The only Jedi slash Sith you fight in the second one is Darth Vader, which we just kicked his ass in the first game. Why would Starkiller have trouble with him in the second game, you know? We myrtleized Vader in the first game, but I digress. I digress. The point is, guys, uh, this is one of my favorite Star Wars games, and I hope you enjoyed this playthrough. I hope you enjoyed watching this thing. I like a lot of Star Wars games. You know, I like uh, Shadows of the Empire on the N64. Star Wars Battlefront 2 on the PlayStation 2 is a great game. Knights of the Old Republic by BioWare I love on the Xbox. Episode 1 Pod Racing on the N64 and Racer Revenge on the PlayStation 2 are really fun. I, I love the pod racing video games. Those are some of the best racers, and, uh, yeah. But, uh, I like this game a lot. This is my f personal favorite Star Wars video game of them all. And, uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, George! But we're not quite done with the playthrough yet. Uh, we still have a whole bunch of extra stuff to show off. I still have to do a whole bunch of DLC levels. I still have to show off all the concept art and costumes. And, uh, would you believe that when I was questioning whether to kill Darth Vader or go save Coda, No, no, that was an actual choice. You can go down there and kill Darth Vader. So come back in the next part when I go for the dark side ending of Star Wars The Force Unleashed. I hope you enjoyed this playthrough, ladies and gentlemen. Until next time, toodles.